Hey guys, it's Brandon from Pixel Planet Studios. Today we're going to look at how to rig up your After Effects projects that are bulky to make them move a little smoother. If you've ever finished up a render just to realize that you didn't turn a layer back on or an effect back on, this tutorial's for you. You don't need to know anything about expressions going into this. Let's get started. Okay, first we're going to speed up render times with a simple checkbox. What I'm hoping to achieve with this is to turn off any bulky effects to make it easier to move around my comp, but to make sure that I don't forget to turn them back on before rendering. In the dynamic link video, I walked you step by step through creating this VFX shot of adding a Premiere pillow to this scene. Our last step was to add a match grain effect, which makes the shot a little bulky. As I continue to keep tweaking or adding to this effect, the match grain effect will slow me down, and truthfully, I don't need it to work on other things, but I want to make sure that I don't forget to turn it back on before rendering. We're going to start by making a new null object, and I'll call it controller, and I'll scale it into a rectangle and move it down to the bottom left of the screen. I'll add a checkbox to it. Now I'm using FX Console by Video Copilot today to add effects, but of course you can come over to your effects and presets panel and add a checkbox from there. It's important to note that checkboxes when deactivated will return a value of 0, and when activated will return a value of 1. And we'll rename the checkbox effect to Final FX. So we're going to lock this effects window on our control layer, and we'll go to our layers for grain, find the match grain effect, and go into the compositing options. By default, the effect opacity is set to 100%, so we want this to be 100% if our final FX are turned on, and 0% or not applied if they're turned off. So we'll all click to add an expression, and we'll pick whip the value to the checkbox, and then we want to multiply it by 100. So in this expression that has been created, we'll type the asterisk for multiplication, and then 100. Let's check our math. 0 times 100 equals 0, and 1 times 100 equals 100. So we've arrived at the numbers that we were hoping to achieve. So let's test it. You can see that if we turn on our final FX, the effect opacity of the match grain effect turns to 100. So I frequently use this for things like grain and motion blur that I'm going to be adding at the end of the shot. So we didn't need it for this shot, but as an example, let's say I have an adjustment layer with pixel motion blur on it, and I need to bump the samples up to 10 to get a good result. But that could also make the composition very bulky. You could add this expression right to the opacity of the adjustment layer. Now remember, we want to make sure that we don't forget to turn this on before rendering, so how can we do that? Let's create a new shape layer. So without anything selected, I'll grab the rectangle tool and click and drag an area just on the right hand side. And I'll make it red, and in the fill options I'll bring the opacity down to 50% so we can see through. And I'll name it to LQ Warning, and I'll drag it below our controller layer. So this is going to get a little confusing because we want it to be opposite of the expressions that we just made. So I'll, I'll click the opacity, and I'm going to once again pick whip it to the checkbox, and I'm going to type minus one, and then I'm going to put that whole thing in parentheses and type times negative 100. So this one is for all those people who said we'd never use math again. We've basically converted the zero and one to negative one and zero, and when we multiply those by negative 100, we get a positive 100 and zero because we wanted to end up with 100 and 0 instead of 0 and 100. So now you'll see how fast this renders when the final effects are turned off versus how slow it is when they're turned on. On my computer, it's about 3 seconds per frame versus real time when those effects are turned off. OK, so here we have a really bulky Element 3D scene for our annual Rocket Awards, and we're going to rig this up with a drop down menu. So we'll create a new null object and scale it and move it to the bottom like we did before. And we'll once again call it controller. And we'll create a new drop down menu, which by default has three items. We'll change those to HQ, LQ, and off. And we'll change the name of the effect to final FX. Okay, so I try to make this tutorial easy to follow whether you know any expressions in After Effects or not. So I've included a link in the description to copy and paste this expression into your project. You just need to replace the blue values and you'll want to make sure that you don't touch the quotation marks around them. And basically what this is saying is, if our drop-down menu is set to case one, it will return whatever value we want for HQ, case two, LQ, and case three, our off value. So we'll twirl down the menu for Element 3D, and we'll go to Motion Blur, and we'll look at Motion Blur samples. We needed a high value for this, but it's making the project really bulky. 
Let's lock the effects control for our control layer, and we'll all click and paste our expressions. And I'll click off, and I'll click back on so we can see the whole expression. I'll pick whip the drop down menu to the menu for final FX, and then I'll type 32 for case 1, 7 for case 2, and 0 for case 3, so that the motion blur samples are 32 for HQ, 7 for LQ, and 0 for off. Now you'll see that if I turn it to off, the lowest our motion blur samples can go is 3. So if we actually want the motion blur totally off, we need to add a similar expression to the motion blur setting. So for HQ and LQ, we want motion blur on, and for off, we want off. And we can see that on is the second choice in the dropdown, and off is the third. So we'll be typing 2 for on and 3 for off. So obviously it's a little more confusing when you have a drop-down menu, you have to look at what item that you're trying to match in the other drop-down menu, but that's how we're gonna do it. And if I go to the frame where the text is moving fast, you can see how our drop-down lets us see with the motion blur off, low samples, and high samples. And I sped this footage up because it took about 40 seconds to render at the high quality. Okay, let's go down to our output settings and let's twirl down our output settings and go to multi-sampling. Okay, multi-sampling is another drop-down menu. So we want high quality to be 16, low quality to be eight, and off to be two. So we're actually going to have to set them to six, five, and three, since those are the order in the drop-down menu. So I'll paste the expression and I'll change these numbers to six, five, and three. So if I hit the caps lock to disable rendering, I can click through real quick and you'll see that it is working and our drop down menu is giving us those multi sampling numbers that we were looking for. When we drop to off for final effects, I also want the render mode of element to change to preview as well. So we'll go into render mode and you'll see that full render is one and preview is our second item. So we'll paste our expression and we'll type one, one and two. So that way, again, if we turn our final effects to off, element will go into preview mode. And that will help us really move around our composition quickly. And then we'll go up to our camera and we're gonna look at the blur level on the camera. So we're going to paste our expression and we're going to type 100, 40, and zero. These are a little easier because these are just numerical values. Um, but of course, it's going to take longer to render a blur level of 100 than it is 40. And finally, I'll create a new text layer and I'll type warning. Warning! Warning! And then I'll go into our source text and paste our expression. And for HQ, I don't want any text up, so I'll leave it blank. And for LQ, I'll type LQ and off, I'll type off. And now when we're in LQ or off, we get a warning to make sure that we know to set it to HQ before rendering. So now if I set this to LQ, the scene renders in a fraction of the time, making it a lot easier for us to move around in the composition. In our case, it was about 15% of the time that it took for HQ. And if we set it to off, we could move around the composition in real time. So these are a few ways that I've rigged up my projects. If you have any similar tips or tricks that you use, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. See you on the next one.